Hello everybody. I hope this finds you well. Pretty hot and humid here. We've been getting a little rain, but just enough to make it hot and humid. Um, I had something I was going to talk about. Oh, you have to forgive me if on any of the comments in the last couple of days I've been a little terse with you. Um, heat does that to people, you know. I try to be civil. Some people can get aggravating as heck. Um, been having an interesting video debate, or not debate, video debate, but debate in comment sections in one of my videos with uh, an atheist. Uh, I respect him. I think he's uh, actually wanting to know. I think he's actually asking. He's not uh, decided yet, I would say. But there's something I would like to say, however. There's no such thing as a true atheist. Um, yeah. People believe they're atheists and they call themselves atheists, but really they're agnostics. Um, the atheist uh, ideology, let's say, is illogical. But, um, why do people have it? I believe there was a study on that once. Number one reason why people become atheists is because something tragic happened in their lives or something went bad and uh, they were upset because God didn't help them out through it. Uh, therefore, there must not be a God. Interesting. Good thing Job didn't think that way. I was an atheist once, and I look back on it. Why did I become an atheist? Mostly because of the bull crap that I was getting from my religious upbringing. A little bit too, uh, what's the word I'm trying to look for? Deceptive. So I understand why so many people don't like religion. There's a lot of deception in religion. But uh, who made religion? God doesn't have a religion, and it was the religious people that crucified, or had Christ crucified. It was the religious people of his day that he spoke against mostly. If he was here today, he'd probably be doing the same thing. I'm not here to condemn you. It's not my job. I'm not your judge or your executioner. I'm just a fellow traveler who has some things to say and share with you. You don't got to believe me. In fact, I would prefer it that if you would test what I would say to make sure that I'm right. So I do make mistakes. Some of you do this, and I appreciate you for it. Why do I debate the atheist when I say you shouldn't argue with them? I don't do it to argue with them. 
I actually don't do it to save them. I can't save them. I can't save anybody. Ain't nobody gonna save you, and nobody can save you. You know, the Word of God can save you. But you have to hear it and believe it. I can guide you towards it, help you understand it, maybe, in a way. But my understanding is limited as well. They say there's no evidence of God. I kind of laughed at that one. Now, I used to say that too. But that was before my eyes were opened. And because my denial, deep inside, I knew there was something more to it than this. But I was rejecting what I was being taught in that church I was being raised in. But upon later looking into the Bible myself and not taking their words for it, or I'm not taking verses out of context, jumping around the Bible to prove a point, it's straightforward and clear where it says it. The day of the Lord is one day. That's judgment day. There's no escaping judgment, people. Even you, Christian, will have to answer and make account for every word you speak. Christ's words. You will have to give an answer. You will have to be accountable for every word you speak. Are you ready to be accountable for every word you speak? Hmm. I think about that. I have to ask forgiveness and pray for His blessings and mercy upon me. I hope you do too. Now, some of you are going to ask why it changed me, what converted me to Christianity. I won't go there. It's a personal thing. But uh, some, know, some know my testimony. The ones I felt should know it. But there's a deeper story behind it than just what happened that converted me. Because my journey it has been a long one and there's been many turns along the way a lot of you ask me questions about what I think about this or what I think about that you really don't want to know what I think about some of those things you really don't then I'd have to make another prayer of repentance You see, I'm just another fella out there, another guy with a computer, camera, and a microphone that has a voice and likes to talk to you and share things with you. That's all. It's as simple as that. If you get wisdom from my words, well, fine. I don't see myself as being very wise. I do think a lot. Oftentimes, that doesn't help much. I can tell you this now that my faith in the Christ is greater now than it ever has been. And it continues to grow with each day. And the hardships in my life continue to grow each day as I get older. Why do bad things happen to good people? The rain falls on the wicked as well as the just. 
you can't beat physics. What goes up must come down. Actions have consequences. And oftentimes, our actions have consequences for people long after we're gone. The things I do, being a grandfather myself, I understand this and see it clearly. The things that I've done and do influence how their life is and will be. And so, if I do something bad, it falls on them as well. It's not their fault. I'm the one who would have to pay for that, but they would have to suffer because of me. That is what it's talking about in the blessings and curses and why it goes for three generations. Because it takes that long to recover from the mistake of that old fart. A foolish young man in his twenties to do something really stupid. And then when he's 70, look back and see how screwed up his kids are and his grandchildren are because of it. There is hope for their children, though, your great-grandchildren, because it's able to be worked out of the system by then. So what you do is more important than just how it affects you. Everything is connected. What I do affects everything around me and everybody else around me and can do so and have a lasting effect for many years after me. So you should be careful what you do and how you treat others because it could have a lasting effect that will multiply over the generations until we have countries blowing each other up over stupid petty things. Think about that one. And don't blame God for your problems. Grow some balls. God likes overcomers. You ain't gonna be much of an overcomer if you have nothing to overcome, are you? Just a spoiled, rotten child. He gets everything they want. God doesn't want spoiled children that get everything they want. He wants winners. Or crybabies. So pick yourself back up off the floor. Chin up. And move forward. One day at a time. I hope that got through to some of you. But if not, that's the way it is. You don't have to agree. You do not have to agree. But please be civil. Have a good day. Peace, love, and understanding. And be with you all.